Hi everyone, welcome back to Collodion Basics. Today's the big day, we're finally gonna pour a plate. So the process of actually shooting a plate is gonna be broken up into several videos, but today we're just gonna get started with pouring, sensitizing the plate, and loading into the plate holder. So, with no further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the things that I've got in front of me here are what you need for the first part of the collodion process. Now, this does not need to be conducted in the dark, as you can tell by the fact that I am in a brightly lit room. All of the darkness that we need will be provided by my silver tank, which is nice and light tight. Now, I do have the silver nitrate bath loaded into this tank. There's probably around 350 milliliters in here, just enough to cover a 4x5 plate when I load it into the tank. I have a plate ready to go. This is aluminum trophy plate. It still has the plastic cover on the front of it, and it's slightly smaller than four by five inches because I'm gonna be using my Chamonix plate holder today. I've also got my collodion on hand, of course. Uh, this is my UVPX. I've got it stored in a glass media bottle. And then I also have a piece of paper towel here. I'm gonna use that to catch any spills and to kind of tap off the pour corner at the end to hopefully get the plate as clean as possible. Now, going into a pour, it's important to have a game plan ahead of time because there are basically two clocks that start ticking once you begin this process. The first one starts when you peel the protective wrapper off the plate. At that point, you want to get pouring pretty quickly because once the plate is exposed to the environment, uh, bits of dust and other debris could potentially fall out of the air onto the plate and cause artifacts in your images. So the shorter the time between taking the wrapper off the plate, pouring it and getting into the bath, the better. So I always try to keep the plate still covered until I'm ready to go. The other big one is once you have poured the collodion from the bottle onto the plate, it starts drying. If the plate gets too dry, it's not gonna work. So you wanna make sure that from the time you open up that collodion bottle, you start pouring you basically know what you're going to do. So with that in mind, let's talk about the actual pour. The basic idea here is that we're gonna take our collodion, we're gonna pour a puddle of it onto the plate. Now the amount that you wanna pour is usually more than you think you need to. Um, usually what I do is I pour until I get a puddle right in the middle that's kind of starting to approach the edges of the plate. Now there's different ways you can hold this. Some people like to kind of hold it with one thumb um, and just kind of cantilever it out here. Personally, I prefer to support the plate from the bottom as if I were kind of holding a tray like a waiter. This way I can coat the entire surface of the plate, whereas this kind of like almost crab pincer method, this requires you to leave at least one corner uncoated. So personally, I like edge to edge plates. So I always just support my plate from the bottom. So the way we do this is we pour a puddle in the middle make it a nice big puddle. Um, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll the collodion around to all four corners of the plate. And as you do this, as long as you poured enough collodion, the entire plate should get coated. Now, like I said, you want a game plan beforehand. You don't wanna pour the collodion on the plate and then say, oh no, where do I go next? So consider ahead of time the sequence of corners you're gonna pour to. You have to remember, that the collodion is going to come out of the bottle. At the end, you're going to have excess collodion that you want to pour back into the same bottle, which is going to still be in the same hand that you poured out of. So for me, my preferred order is I pour, and if this is because I'm right-handed and I'm holding my collodion bottle in my right hand. I like to pour. I tilt the plate just a tiny bit. It doesn't take much tilt to do this. I tilt the plate to get the collodion to flow to the bottom left corner from my perspective. Then I tilt the plate forward to get the front left corner. Then I tilt it to the right to get the front right corner. And then I tilt it down to get the bottom right corner. At that point, the collodion is now masked up down here at a very convenient corner for me to pour it back into the pour bottle. And what you do then is you just start it as kind of a slow trickle tipping off the plate. And then as the flow of collodion off the plate begins to slow, you tip it all the way up 
and you kind of walk your fingers up to the edges of the plate and you begin to rock it back and forth. The rocking motion is to keep the collodion from drying in streaks as it flows down the plate. So the rocking will move it back and forth and give you a relatively even coating. So let's go ahead and do a pour. So before I pour, I always like to unlatch my silver tank. That's just one fewer thing that I'm going to have to worry about while my hands are full. Because after pouring the collodion, giving the collodion a few seconds to dry, we're going to want to load it into the tank and gently lower it in. So before I take my wrapper off, I always like to get the collodion bottle nice and loose. Now I'm going to peel the plastic wrapper off the front of the plate and you just try to get one corner worked up and then you can pull it right off. I'm going to open up my collodion bottle and then I'm going to pour myself a nice puddle right in the middle. I like to pause a bit here so that the collodion doesn't kind of doesn't form a wave back and forth at the shoulder of the media bottle. I try to keep my puddle roughly centered. And then I'm just going to go to each corner in series. And at the end, we break that surface tension and let the collodion start to flow off. And then we raise the plate and we start rocking it back and forth. It's very important that you stick to your sequence, even if it turns out that you didn't pour enough collodion. You never want the collodion to, to pour back on itself on the plate because the previous areas will have already started to dry and the free flowing collodion will form ridges over the old collodion. It never looks good. So if you end up with holes in the surface of your coating, you just have to live with it. And it's really not the end of the world. A lot of your first plates are gonna have holes in them. But you can try to mitigate that by pouring plenty of collodion. Now the standard test for when you should put your plate into the bath is that you press the collodion film with your thumb and if it springs back, or sorry, when it doesn't spring back too easily, that's supposed to tell you that the collodion has set up enough to go into the bath. Personally, I can't bring myself to put a thumbprint on my plates, so I just try to give it what feels like a little bit of time, around half a minute or so. Also, you may notice that I turned the plate kind of horizontally earlier. I really shouldn't have done that. You want to keep the plate nice and vertical so the collodion doesn't flow back on itself. Now I'm just going to pull the lid on my silver tank. I'm going to put the plate on the hooks here. And I'm going to lower it gently and steadily into the bath. You don't want to pause while lowering the plate into the bath because that will create what are called hesitation lines on your plate. You want it to be smooth, but you don't want it to be too fast because turbulence could create bubbles if you just straight up drop the lid right into the bath. So you want just a nice gentle lowering into the bath. Now, I did pour directly back into my pour bottle with the excess collodion. Some people like to use a separate bottle to catch the excess. Um, in theory, this could lead to my main collodion bottle getting a little bit too dehydrated over time as the solvents evaporate out of it. But if that happens, you can just add a little bit more alcohol, maybe a little bit more ether to the collodion, and it'll be fine. And personally, I pretty much never even have to do that. So I pour out of back into the same bottle I think most people do. It's generally not a problem. But if you want to be extra fastidious about it, you can use a separate pour-off bottle. Do try to get the lid back on the collodion as quickly as you can after pouring your plate because those solvents will evaporate out and dry out the collodion. But make sure you don't rush yourself to the point that it hinders your ability to pour a clean plate. Because, of course, getting the best image you can is always priority number one. So, now that this plate is in the bath, I'm going to take it into the dark room, and we're going to give it roughly two to three minutes, maybe a little bit longer, to sensitize. After that, we'll pull it out, and we'll load it into the plate holder. So, let's go to the dark room. All right, welcome to the dark room. Now, what I'm using for 
My dark room is just a blacked out section of my garage with red LED lighting. If you don't have any space that you can turn into a dark room, it is totally okay to use a dark box, which we've talked about in a previous video, so I won't get into it too much here. In the space that I'm in here, you're gonna see, or hopefully see, depending on how this comes out, that I've got basically four things in front of me. So first of all, I have a puppy pad here underneath the area that I'm working because I don't wanna get my nicer bench top covered in silver nitrate stains. At least not yet. This is only a few weeks old, so let's keep it pristine for a little while. I've got my silver nitrate tank here with the plate in it. I've got my plate holder here ready to go. And I also have two paper towels. So one paper towel is gonna to be for tapping the plate on after it comes out of the bath to catch excess silver. And one of these paper towels is going to be for wiping the back of the plate before I load it into the holder. Now before I take the plate out of the bath, I like to open up the back of my plate holder, remove this spring-loaded tablet, and just set the plate holder open and off to the side. Okay, now how do you tell that your plate is ready to come out of the bath? A lot of people use timers, and strictly speaking, a timer is not reliable. It's not a time-based process. Generally, it takes about two to three minutes in a silver bath for a plate to be ready insensitive to shoot with. However, sometimes it can take longer or less time depending on atmospheric conditions and the state of your silver bath. The two things that you want to look for to be certain are one, a kind of a milky white color on the surface of the plate, and two, you want the silver bath to run smoothly off the plate when you pull it out. If the, if the silver bath is still running in a way that leaves the surface looking kind of greasy, then you need to put it back in the bath and let it sensitize some more. Personally, I don't even bother with a timer. I usually just put the plate in the bath and then I go and work on setting up my scene or in this case, moving cameras into the dark room. By the time I get back, usually the plate is just ready to go. So this plate has had plenty of time while I was moving the cameras in here. And just to be clear, you don't generally have to worry about leaving it in for too long within reason. Uh, I wouldn't leave it in there for say half an hour or longer, but if we're talking like 10 minutes versus two, it doesn't really make a difference. Uh, once the plate is ready, it's ready. Leaving an aluminum plate in there for an extended period of time could leach silver out of the bath, but a few minutes over the minimum time is not gonna cause you problems. So let's go ahead and pull our plate out here. The surface comes out nice and clean. And I think this plate looks just fine. There is, I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but there is a little bit of slight amount of ridging from the collodion pour, but that will probably come out in the fixer. So as you can see, I'm just gonna tap this on the one paper towel and really you should hold this over the open silver bath a little bit longer than I did just to catch any stray drops that are falling out. Now before we load the plate into the holder, we want to wipe the excess silver nitrate off the back of the plate. This helps to keep the plate holder clean and it also helps you avoid exhausting your fixer any earlier than you have to because the fixer's job is to pull unexposed silver halides out of the plate. So leaving extra silver on the back of the plate is gonna make that fixer work harder and then it won't last as long. Now just take the plate, make sure you load it into the holder face down. So whatever side you poured the collodion on, that is the side that you want to be facing outwards when the plate holder goes into the camera. This is usually pretty easy to keep track of with aluminum plates, but be careful if you're shooting glass plates because it can be difficult to tell under the safe light which side you actually poured the collodion on. So I'm just gonna load this plate directly into the plate holder. Now the tablet goes in behind the plate to apply pressure. And then I just close the plate holder. Now when I flip this over, when I pull the dark slide out of the plate, or sorry, out of the plate holder, the plate surface will be right there in the front of the camera. So, let's take this plate holder out and let's go ahead and snap a photo with it. 
I'm also going to change my gloves now because I don't want to get silver nitrate on my camera.